Oh, hi. It's the book father again. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on what time you're watching this. For today's video, I'm decided to do a review on three audiobooks that I finished re listening to recently. Now, the three books are the first three in a series of six, uh, referred to as the Shadow Dance series. Now, they're written by David Deglish, I think I'm saying that name right, and they're narrated by uh, Elijah Alexander. First thing, I don't think I would have enjoyed these books as much had it not been for the the right narrator being chosen for this series. So, um, Elijah Alexander, wherever you might be, doing a great job, and I thank you. So, um, the first book in the Shadow Dance series is called A Dance of Cloaks. Now, in A Dance of Cloaks, we come to realize that in the city of Valderan, there are two major factions. One is the Thief Guilds. There's many Thief Guilds, but they all uh, respect their own territories and uh, use their own methods to cause terror and gain profit. And on the other hand, we have three major families that... Uh, work together most of the time, and they're referred to as the Trifect. Now, the main thief, the one that all the other thieves are intimidated by, and the Trifect is worried about, is a man that goes by the name of Thren Fellhorn, uh, the top assassin in the entire city. With Thren, <clears throat> with Thren, uh, he has two major decisions, two major paths that he has to complete. One is he needs to find out uh, who will be his heir, who will take over when his life has come to an end. And second, Thren has come up with a plan to finally end the trifect, just put him all out and put himself in complete control. Now in order to do that, he needs the heads of all the other thief guilds to agree to his plan, and one way or another, Thren will find a way for them all to say yes, or die trying. On the other hand, when we have the trifect, the trifect, they have this tradition of every second year of all the major households coming together and uh, selling whatever wares they may have, be it livestock or goods or perishables, any of that. And they feel that if they keep this going, that their control over the city will can't help but grow even further. So by the end of the first book, A Dance of Cloaks, uh, we come to the realization that both sides aren't completely satisfied, but both sides are not defeated. They may be diminished, but they're not defeated. And we're left wondering, we're left wondering where the story will go on from there. The second book, a Dance of Blades. Now, the main character in A Dance of Blades is a character that we first met in A Dance of Cloaks. Only this character, instead of following through with what was presented to as their only destiny, the only way for them to live, they've found the strength uh, in themselves to forge their own path. And in doing so, this character 
doesn't form an allegiance to either side. Doesn't form it to the thief guilds, and doesn't form it to the trisect. In fact, what this character sole purpose is, his uh, mission in life, is to bring an end to both sides so that Valderan can prosper under their own control, not under someone's thumb or watchful eye. Uh, unfortunately, this main character is set up to be the supposed assassin of a member of one of the trifects. And when this conspiracy is put into effect, the hunter, the main character, obviously becomes the hunted. And not only does the trifect hire every mercenary in town with the sole purpose of bringing in the main character to answer for his crime, but another interested party decides to hire the best manhunter in the city. Now, the manhunter is also an interesting character, in my opinion. Uh, we never learn his real name, but he does go by the name Ghost. And one thing that Elijah Alexander does greatly, he does this in all three books thus far, is that he's able to change his voice, his, his verbal mannerisms from time to time, to match a character that would already stand out, but stands out even more thanks to the way he narrates this, and Ghost is no exception. Now, in the end of the second book, uh, almost like the first one, by the end of it, by its conclusion, some form of karma is doled out to all the major parties, to our main character, to the trifect, and to the outside parties that are interested in one or both sides. The third book, A Dance of Mirrors, Now, we still have the main character that we first met in the first and second book. This main character takes up his mission to rid Valderan of all forms of evil. In the meantime, a hundred miles away, there is another city who adopts unknowingly and unwittingly, willingly, their own vigilante. Now, this vigilante goes by the name The Wraith. And this vigilante knows no limits, sets no rules. The Wraith kills anyone, be it from the thief guilds or the royal families or the major households, kills everyone. And while doing so, pays homage or ridicules our main character from Valderan which brings him to the new city to get rid of the wraith before uh, his reputation is tarnished beyond belief. Now, when we get to the new city, we find that the new city is nothing like Valderan. There is very little control, there is very little rules, it's every man, woman, and child for themselves, and there's new forms of evil around every twist and turn in, in this new city. At the head of it all, this new city is on the edge of war between the humans and the fae. Unlike the first two books, in The Dance of Mirrors, uh, one side of the new city, one side is completely abolished. And the other side rises to immaculate heights, which forces our main character to come back home to Valderan. And before the book ends, our main character puts to 
puts to their their selves whether or not uh, they should continue on with this now seemingly hopeless mission, or if they should just quit while they're ahead before everything is taken from them. And that's where we we left. And that's where we leave the third book. Now, nothing against David Deglish, and absolutely nothing against Elijah Alexander. But after listening to the first book, A Dance of Cloaks, I was hesitant about carrying on with this series. Uh, by the end of A Dance of Cloaks, I wasn't satisfied uh, with how it ended. Now, I'm not saying that every book has to end with the good guys winning and the bad guys losing. That kind of gets tiresome. But even with that said, A Dance of Cloaks, I don't think, in my opinion, didn't end much satisfied by the end. I didn't leave much satisfied. Uh, but given a chance, I continued on with the series, and I'm glad I did. Because, in my opinion, uh, so far, A Dance of Blades, the second book, is the best one of the first three. Uh, Dance of Mirrors and A Dance of Cloaks. Now, thanks to A Dance of Cloaks, uh, the foundation is set for A Dance of Blades, which is the one, like I said, the book that I like the most. And because of A Dance of Blades... Uh, what was f the foundation that was put on the first book is added on to and leads to an even richer story for the third. So, uh, overall, I give the first three books in this series uh, four and a half out of five, and I do look forward to continuing the series. Uh, wonder if any of you have listened to or read uh, A Dance of Cloaks, A Dance of Blades, and or a Dance of Mirrors by David Douglas. And if you have, what did you think of them? What was some of the parts that you enjoyed? What were some of the parts you think could have been worked on? Uh, did you continue on with the series? And without any spoilers, uh, how do you think it ended? If you have any questions, comments, or recommendations, please leave them below. Uh, I hope you're... you're uh, okay with liking this video, sharing this video, and subscribing. So until next time, uh, thank you for watching. Try to have a good day.